Robin. Robin. <laughs> so, uh, what do you have to say about Tenerife? I don't know yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> what do you have to say about Tenerife? Uh, the same thing she did. <laughs> Damn it. Guys, what about you? <laughs> no one? Really? Where's Layla? <laughs> global warming, the greenhouse effect. Uh, you put gases like carbon dioxide or CFCs, other greenhouse gases, into the atmosphere over this country. They don't stay over that country. The, those molecules don't have passports. They don't know about national sovereignty. That's something they never heard of. The atmospheric circulation spreads those gases all over the planet. And so what one country does affects all the other countries. The solution to these kinds of problems has to be that everybody on Earth works together. The industrialized nations have the biggest responsibility because they're the biggest polluter. The United States puts more CO2 in the atmosphere than any other nation. But uh, Western Europe and Soviet Union and Japan and even the developing countries all make significant contributions. So there has to be a new way of looking at the future. And that is that we're all humans, members of the same species, on one fragile little planet. We're all in this together. That's kind of the silver lining of these crises. They are forcing us to become a planetary species. I think that's very important. The, the idea that we have information stored outside of our bodies. Um, for most of you, of uh, the history of life on this planet, uh, the organisms have almost all the information that they deal with in their genes, hereditary information, instinct. Uh, then, about uh, maybe 100 million years ago, an hour ago than that, there came to be a, a, a reptile that for the first
first time in the history of life had more information in its brains than in its genes. And uh, that was a major step symbolically in the evolution of life on this planet. Well, now we have an organism, us, which can store more information outside the body altogether than inside the body. And that's in uh, books and computers and television and video cassettes. Uh, and that extraordinarily expands our ability to understand what's happening and, uh, and to manipulate and control our environment, uh, if we do it wisely, for, for human benefit. But the whole idea of, uh, of what happens when you read a book, I find absolutely stunning. Here, here's some product of a tree with little black squiggles on it. You open it up, and inside your head is the voice of someone speaking who may have been dead for 3,000 years. And yet there he is talking directly to you. What a magical thing that is. of biology and the other of a kind of physics, how much better it would be to, uh, to say to the child, uh, that's a good question, Johnny, I don't know the answer, maybe we can look it up, or nobody knows, maybe when you grow up you'll be the person to find out. Uh, I think kids which are, who are discouraged from asking those questions wind up learning the lesson that there's something bad about using the mind, and we lose resources, and we need those intellectual resources because we are in very perilous times. And I think the complex and subtle problems that we face can only have complex and subtle solutions. And we need people able to think complex and subtle thoughts. And I believe a great many children have that capability if only they're encouraged. <laughs> 